basically just have one thing that happened this morning. Um, we had <clears throat> started off uh, about 1.30 a.m. We had an officer that saw a stolen vehicle near 14th Street and Minnesota Avenue. Tried to stop it. This uh, The stolen vehicle is a truck. The truck took off. There was no pursuit at that point, but they started looking for this. This truck had been stolen on the 6th, and it was left running in a parking lot um, when it was a gas station. When the owner got out, somebody drove up, hopped into this truck, and then drove away. And so we had uh, a few different officers that were looking for it around 2 30 or about 2 15 they again saw this stolen truck near 10th and la mesa um, they thought that they recognized the driver who um, may have been involved in some other crimes recently i don't know that we've had any warrants or anything like that but uh, anyway they went to try to stop it there wasn't any traffic out and so they pursued it and eventually the pursuit ended up on the interstate heading north on I-29. Uh, at that point, the police ended up terminating their pursuit, but the highway patrol then picked up the pursuit of that truck. They got off uh, on Maple and then went west. I think they started heading south on Marion, and eventually the troopers stopped the pursuit as well. Uh, it was shortly after that, about 2.30 a.m., we had a call that somebody had said that there was a truck that was on the retaining wall that was near Madison and Redbird Place. There's about a six foot wall and the truck was trying to drive basically downhill and got high centered on this retaining wall. Nobody was inside the vehicle. Uh, shortly after that, we had a guy, a uh, homeowner called us. Uh, he's in the 900 block of North Redbird and said there was somebody in his backyard. That was a passenger of the truck. Um, she was uh, had some injuries from the crash and was taken to the hospital and admitted for that for her injuries. The driver was not found. Uh, that was the thing that they put up the drone. Uh, there was quite a few officers that had a perimeter set up, but they weren't able to locate the the driver of that vehicle. So I don't know that we were that the officers were able to confirm who the driver was. They just had their suspicions. So obviously some more work for that. Um, I don't know, I think that's about it. Damage to the truck? Yeah, let me see. Let me see if I can find the accident report for that. And you won't be giving out the emails or Right, the passenger was not charged with anything, so... Uh, I'm sorry, she wasn't taken to jail. I think she may have been uh, given some citations, but since she's still at the hospital, we're not going to release her name. I didn't. Give me a second with that. I heard a guy looking at another piece of paper. The passenger in the car, I'll get that one first, that'll be quicker, is 20 from Sioux Falls. And... Nope, I got it. Um, they estimated the damage to the retaining wall at fifteen hundred dollars, and damage to the truck is about $3,600. And that was a, I don't think I said that, it was a 2012 Ford F-150. And this is back in the hands of the PD, not the highway patrol, right, for investigation? I don't know, highway patrol was Yeah, well, I mean, there's they're probably going to have their own investigation because they had the pursuit with it that they stopped. So I, they're probably going to have some sort of case, but 
Um, I mean, we have our case as well, so. But the car was stolen in Sioux Falls, and yep. there was some yep. pursuit in Sioux Falls, and the crash occurred in Sioux Falls. Yeah, all of that. I mean, all of that stuff happened within Sioux Falls, and the troopers will have their own separate uh, report to go along with, but it's basically the same thing, so. But you must know who this guy is if you... Well, they, the, with the female and you have well, I don't know that we were able to talk to the the woman. Well, actually, I think I don't think she really wanted to say much. Um, Since we're back to the woman, what did you say her extent of injuries was? Leg injuries. I don't know, doesn't say, just said a leg injury. I, I mean, serious enough where she had to be admitted to the hospital, but I, I can't tell you, I'm guessing non-life threatening, but. Um, yeah, there's nothing in here. I, and I guess I don't know if they had a chance to talk to the passenger at any length of time, but certainly there's a chance that she may be able to provide information who the driver is, but. Um, the officers, like I said, they thought that this was the same person, um, but I don't know that we know that for sure at this point. Does the drone have like a thermal camera? Yes, there is a, um, yeah, there's a different components to it, I think, um, but that's one of the things is the, the thermal um, and I'm guessing that I don't know for sure, but I'm guessing that's probably what they were using since it was up at night. But uh, that's kind of it, guys. The aggravated assaults. Uh, the first one was somebody threatened with a knife. Uh, they were found and arrested. No serious injuries from that. The other one was uh, just a report, no arrest. The burglaries. We had some jewelry, some tools, and then appliances taken. The disorderly conducts, a few trespassings, um, really nothing big out of those. The family offenses are all reports. The forgeries, somebody tried to pass a fake lottery ticket and then left, so no arrest there. The frauds uh, ended up being reports, some credit cards, bad checks, and ID thefts. Larcenies, a few unlocked cars, a few shopliftings, um, nothing real high dollar. Narcotics, we had some marijuana and meth. The sex offenses, one of them was a sex offender that didn't register, the other involves juveniles, no arrests on that. Nothing ser serious from the simple assaults. Vandalisms, we had a uh, window, was, somebody threw a rock at a window, a scooter was found damaged. Uh, some tires, and then a couple of them involved juveniles. And that's all I have, unless you guys have anything else. Okay, thank you.